Hello, welcome to Read Along with Early Educational Air. Today we will be reading Pinkalicious. Ding! Written by Victoria Can and Elizabeth Can. Illustrated by Victoria Can. It was a rainy day. Too wet to go outside, Mommy said, let's make some cupcakes. What color do you want? Pink, I said. Pink, pink, pink. Mommy put in some pink. More, I cried. More, more, more. I gobbled up a couple of cupcakes while Mommy and I frosted them. They were so yummy. They were pinkalicious. I offered one to Peter, my little brother, but he is very picky and didn't want to eat his, so I ate it. Please, Mommy, can I have just one more? I beg when I woke up from nap. You get what you get and you don't get upset, she said. But I got upset. After dinner, I ate more cupcakes. Then I refused to go to bed. Just one more pink cupcake and I'll go to sleep, I promised. Daddy waved a tired finger at me. You have had enough. Uh-oh. <gasps> the next morning when I woke up, I was pink. My face was pink, my hands were pink, my belly was the color of a sunset. Daddy thought I played with markers, so he gave me a bath. The pink did not come off. My hair was the color of raspberry sherbet. I cried because I was so beautiful. I even had pink tears. I put on my pink berry dress and twirled in front of the mirror while mommy sped dialed the pediatrician. I'm Pinkerbell, look at me, I'm Pinkerbell, I sang. Mommy grabbed her purse. Just one more pink cupcake, please, just one more, I yelled on the way out the door. Mommy took me right to the doctor's office. Uh-oh. Dr. Wink looked at me and said, you have a rare acute case of pinkatitis. I guess that's not the worst thing that could happen. Just call me Pinkarella. Then Dr. Wink said, for one week, no more pink cupcakes, pink bubble gum, or pink cotton candy. To return back to normal, you must eat a steady diet of green food. On the way home, I stopped at the playground. My friend Allison was there, but she did not see me because I blended in with the pink peonies. When I waved to Allison, a bumblebee landed on my nose. Bzz. Buzz off, I'm not a flower, I scolded the bee. Soon, I was surrounded by Bees and butterflies and birds. Mommy, I cried, please take me home. When we left the playground, I asked mommy if I could have another pink cupcake when we get home. 
Don't you remember what the doctor told you? She said, no more cupcakes. Peter tugged on my pigtails. I wish I was pink like you, he said. He was green with envy. That night, I pretended to eat my dinner of mushy, dark green vegetables. After everyone went to sleep, I sneaked into the kitchen, climbed onto the chair, and reached up my tippy toes to the top of the refrigerator where mommy had hidden the pink cupcakes. I just took one more pink cupcake and I ate it. Then I licked the pink cupcake wrapper clean. Was that a good idea? I don't know. <gasps> when I woke up in the morning, I felt different. I ran to the mirror and I peered at my reflection. I was deeper pink than I have ever seen. In fact, I was no longer pink. I was red. Oh no, not red, I screamed. I don't want to be red. I should have not eat, have eaten that last pink cupcake. I wanted to be myself again. I knew what I had to do. I opened the fridge, held my nose, and squeezed a bottle of icky green relish into my tongue. I ate pickles and spinach, olives and orca, and I choked down some artichokes, gagged on some grapes, and burped up some Brussels sprouts. Next thing I knew, my arms tickled, my e ears tingled, and my feet twitched. I was no longer red, I was no longer pink, I was me, and I was beautiful. So, what happened to the rest of the cupcakes, Pinkalicious? Daddy asked. Just then, Peter ran in and yelled, Pinkaboo! The end. Thank you for joining me on my read-along. Hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.